Firstly, I would like to acknowledge the Bedigal people whose land UNSW resides on. I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and extend my respects to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders watching on today. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. We know that there's a lot of uncertainty around COVID-19 and what that means for us as a community, as well as students. A lot of people are doing it tough. You might be feeling overwhelmed, anxious or frustrated. So we want to check in. Welcome to Tea and Talk. Tea and Talk is a chance for us to chat to you and guests in the know about the tough stuff and spill the tea on the hype around wellness. We'll be answering your questions about what's going on up top or with a cup of tea in hand. Hello, I'm Steph, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a fourth year commerce and psychology student. I'm also an ARC student coordinator. I'm joined today by Professor Wilkinson, who has recently joined us from UNSW as the DPVC from the University of Sussex. Professor Wilkinson has a distinguished record of contributions to education, research and knowledge exchange across the globe. Before moving to Sussex, Professor Wilkinson worked for 17 years at the University of Manchester. He also worked and held visiting positions at Brown University, Wesley College and the Australian National University. He began his academic career and conducted doctoral work at the University of Auckland. Welcome, Professor Wilkinson. Thank you, Steph. That's very nice of you. Please call me Rawdon, though, will you? Awesome. Thanks, Rawdon. So do you have a cup of tea with you today? Of course. Look, I am a quintessential caricature of 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 an English person. Of course. Um, I always have a cup of tea. In your cup? Well, at the moment, I've got English breakfast tea, which sounds like the worst caricature, but (laughs) it's true. Um, so like most people, I tend to kick the day off with a cup of tea and then I take the coffee jolt that we all need to get going. Right. So but tea for me is, is super important. Um, and I tend to drink black tea up until about 3 p.m. And then after 3 p.m., uh, Roybosch tea. Um, and they, and it, it's kind of, I feel a natural change over in my day from yeah. black tea to Roybosch. So. How many, what's the quantity of cups of tea that you're having each day? Oh, no, I drink a lot of tea. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's a, it's of course. really important. But, you know, my uh, my colleagues bought me as a welcome to UNSW gift a couple of months ago, mm. a very fancy box of Twining's English breakfast tea. But I would normally drink just Tetley or basic Yorkshire tea because oh. I'm a northern boy and, <laughs> uh, and that's just what I grew up on. Completely fair. Um, yes, I've also got my mug here today. Good to see. Um, yes, super excited to be sipping along. What are you drinking? Well, I'm unfortunately not a tea person, and oh, no. that must be the worst thing to hear. I'm a coffee person, so I've right. got a nice long black here today. Um, yeah, I just could never get around tea. It's very unfortunate. Uh, well, I'm even drinking black tea, not white tea. So okay. you know, I'm, I'm a proper tea thing. connoisseur. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you with my coffee today. <laughs> no, no disappointment at all. Awesome. Um, so to jump into some questions, sure. um, COVID has really turned everyone's life upside down in the simplest way to put it. We know for students, working and studying from home has been really difficult um, and maybe just not even having the freedom to see their friends or engage with others the way they did. Um, for you, what has been the most challenging aspect of COVID? Thanks, Steph. Uh, so it's a really good question. And um, and we've all got our own stories. And I, I uh, mine's no different from other people. We all struggle. So we moved from uh, the UK to Australia in towards the end of January. And we arrived just as the bushfires were dying out and the storms were beginning. So um, we had that to encounter. And then, uh, then COVID-19 struck. And I still have parents back in the UK um, and friends. But I have two children who are 10 and 12. And the the hardest thing I think has been that my kids have arrived in Australia. They went to school. They've begun to make friends. But um, very quickly then they had to come home to be home educated or at least do school at home. And it's been very difficult for them to maintain connections with their new Australian friends. But then to not have to... um, to feel that they're cut adrift from their, their British friends. Now they can keep in touch through social media, but they feel at the moment neither here nor there. Mm. And as a parent, it's really hard to watch them go through that. 
they are the most extraordinary kids and and their resilience is actually it, it's a bit of a role model for us all i watch them and i just marvel at their their um, staying power so that's inspiring but it's also heart-wrenching to see your own children struggle in that way um so my story is no different from the hardship of anybody else yeah um, and i certainly wouldn't claim that but I think all of us have found moments that we've you know, struggled with with COVID-19. And of course, we can't get back to see relatives and mm. they can't travel and my parents are elderly. And... Yeah, there's all, it's, it's affecting us in different ways every day and we never know what's coming next. But um, yeah. yeah, it's always good to share those stories and especially like seeing your kids so resilient. What a good change. And um, for students at the moment, um, we're coming up to exam season. And with someone who has heaps of experience as a student working at universities, um, you've seen countless exam periods come and go. Um, with exams coming up, do you have any advice for new students that are maybe doing a first university exam period or students like myself who have done quite a few um, but might need some new ways of thinking now that we're doing it online? Yeah, so it's it's a really good question because it doesn't matter how long you've been at university, this is the first time we have 100% online assessment. And um, so there have been two things going on here. One is my colleagues moving all their assessment online. And secondly, your lack of uh, familiarity with that. Um, I think that in terms of tips, we are trying really hard to get that right. And I want in the future to make sure that your assessment experience is a different one, a better one, mm. and a more digitally authentic one. So in the future, I hope you'll be able to do all of your assessments on your own device at your own choosing and that you will um, feel secure and comfortable in that environment. At the moment, I think just try and do all those things you would normally do before any kind of assessment. Relax, really find time to relax try and avoid cramming and just breathe. As silly as those bits of advice sound, the number of students who still cram right until the last moment, don't breathe, feel nauseous, go into an exam, go blank, panic, think, oh no, what am I doing? Yeah. You know it all. You've got it. It's fine. Just relax and trust yourself. Yeah. Um, and don't worry about the new environment. You know, we will make sure that there's no detriment here. Um, if you've struggled and you don't think that we've acknowledged that you've really struggled and you think we should do something about it, you just have to get in touch with the exams teams. Awesome. And you mentioned um, that we do cram and that I know that I've done it and we've all been there. Um, and that stress and anxiety that comes with exams and with doing those things that maybe aren't the most helpful. Um, how, like, do you have any tips about how we can go about not ending up cramming or not ending up stressing? Um, any sort of helpful habits and how to deal with stress and those things? Habits to deal with stress. I can certainly share how I deal with it. Mm. Um, I don't know that it, it helps everyone, but, you know, cramming all the things you've heard, try and plan ahead, try and avoid it, try and focus and just relax and have a timetable. All those things matter. Yeah. But stress management, walking. Yeah. Walking is, I think, uh, at least for me, the most powerful way of dealing with stress. Mm -hmm. If I go for a run or I go to the gym in those days when we could, when we used to be able to go to gyms, mm -hmm. um, what I would do is exhaust myself. And that's not stress relieving, that's exhausting myself. But walking, there's something about the pace of walking that really helps. Now, in these lockdown moments, I think that there's a temptation to go for a walk with our families or with our flatmates or, or whatever, and, and that's nice. Yeah. But there's something about walking alone, either early in the morning or at night, where if you go for an hour, you can really begin to acknowledge the things that you're feeling and begin to throw them away. Yeah. And just feel the pavement beneath your feet, push away and walk. And you'd be surprised how therapeutic that actually is. It, it's, no, um, it's no secret. It's just a way of the body taking over from the mind and just getting rid of the day or, or getting your thoughts collected so you can have a day um, in, a, in a less stressful way. I found it enormously helpful. And not having earphones in and not having my okay. phone anything other than my back pocket, just walk on your own. 
Awesome. In a safe environment. Okay. You know, that's the key. Yeah, definitely. And um, I know that a lot of um, things that we do often come from a non-helpful place and that sometimes like walking or like other things, you start these habits um, for me, which is cramming. Let's go with that because I've definitely done it before um, that aren't helpful. Um, Is there something else that you maybe used to do to manage with stress, with exams or deadlines maybe because you might probably haven't done exams in a while. Um, Something that you used to do that wasn't helpful and then what have you replaced it with? I I did all those unhelpful things (laughs) and it took a very long time to stop doing them actually and I can't tell you with all honesty that I've stopped all of them. Definitely. Um, Fair enough. If I've got a big important meeting coming up, I cram, I'm at the last minute, you know, all those things still happen. And and that's partly an adrenaline response that, you know, you feel you've got to be doing something. It takes some time to just stand back and go and have a walk. Yeah. um, And do that beforehand. That's that's the important thing. But there's some other helpful things. Um, So one thing that's really important about getting us to breathe in a conversation Mm. is to think about the way you stand. I'm standing now. I have a standing desk in my office. Mm. And it, it, it means that I can just relax a bit more than being hunched up when I'm sat down. Mm. And if I feel small or if I feel that I'm not being heard or if I feel that um, I'm not able to project myself, stand with your hands on your hips. It's <laughs> called the Wonder Woman pose. <laughs> and honestly, it, it makes a difference. Stand up, Steph. Put your hands on your hips and you'll Help feel... Them. You'll feel powerful. So you know what? Just, just breathe. You feel powerful. Just breathe. <laughs> so we have Linda Carter and Wonder Woman to thank for that because it's a. <laughs> it, I, I know that sounds silly and ridiculous, but if you feel powerful, then you feel a bit more in control. And yeah. if you feel a bit more in control, then you don't feel quite so anxious. And right. it's the anxiety that really gets in the way of performing the way you want to. And the other thing is. There's a, a YouTube movement on uh, you are enough, and it's a bit hackneyed and stuff now, but you are enough. Yeah. And you've got to just trust yourself. So go into that exam environment, however that is, in your room with your computer or whatever. Stand in your Wonder Woman pose and trust <laughs> yourself. Yeah. Do your assessment and then get on with something much more exciting. Yeah. I love that. I'm definitely going to start using that. Um, I know I can, I can feel the difference that it's going to make. Need that confidence boost sometimes. So when we next meet in a meeting, you'll, <laughs> you'll know that if I've had time, I will be standing in my Wonder Woman pose before. Fantastic. And I'll be breathing. <laughs> awesome. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> That's oversharing. I realise that. Oh, it never is. <laughs> um, and so the Wellness Warriors are a group of volunteers in ARC that are promoting healthy habits and reminding students to look after themselves. Um, they always love to share the quote, you can't pour from an empty cup. Um, so we like to ask everyone, what do you do, do to fill your cup up? Uh, so that's, that's really good. I try and take some time out. Um, mm. It's really impossible um, most of the day, but there has to be a moment where I clear my mind. Mm. Because if I don't clear my mind, I don't sleep. And if I don't sleep, I don't perform. And I want to make sure that everything we do on the education front at UNSW is for students. And it's right. And I think that you all feel there's a distance sometimes between the institution and you. And I want to narrow that distance. Um, And the best way I can narrow that distance is by um, trying to be at my best. So I take that time out to walk and spend time with my kids too. They come walking with me and, and, you know, we just have silent walks and things like that. It's nice. So it's, I fill my cup by having downtime. Amazing. Um, And as the last question for today, um, I always like to bring this one in at the end in case someone who's watching has zoned out, forgot to listen, is overwhelmed by everything that we've just been talking about. Um, If you could leave students with one thing to think about, to remember, to work on, just one thing to take away from today, what would it be? Um, I'd like you all to take away that you're not alone. Every single feeling that you have about stress and anxiety, about exams, about COVID, about everything, we all feel it. Mm. Some people show it more than others, but we all feel it. And we all have to be there for each other. We have to create our own networks, our our own little communities of sharing and understanding. 
And that, I think, obliges us to spot any problems that people are having, people who aren't coping. And I think that if we're, we're there for each other and we're able to spot when people are really struggling, that we need to, we're able to do something about it. And I, and I would ask us all to try and reach out to those people you haven't heard from, because it may be that they've not heard from anyone for a long time, whether it's elderly relatives or siblings or friends or cousins or whomever, just reach out to them because you, you just don't know how they're dealing with it. And five minutes of just finding out how they are is, is so powerful. Yeah, awesome. Um, thank you so much, Rodan, for joining us today. Uh, you'll actually be joining us again in a few weeks. Um, so we would love for you guys who are watching to send us questions. Um, you can message, ARC, DM us or email us any questions that you might have for Rodan um, to discuss next time on Tea and Talk. But until next time, thank you and goodbye. Thank you, Steph. See ya. Thank you very much.